Oh, wow, wow. There she is. Oh, boy. Tax deductible and <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're here at uh, Erg uh, in Potter, Potterfield, New York, and uh, we're getting ready to fly a lot of rockets. My friend Andrew is back, and this is Ethan. And uh, we've got uh, Andrew's rocket, other of Andrew's rocket, other of Andrew's rocket, and my big rocket right here, which is getting ready to fly. Um, and then I've got my signal rocket and uh, the rocket that you saw in the last video. So uh, I've got the motor right here for the big black rocket. Uh, so it's a M1520P. So it fits in this motor case right here. And uh, this is the, the nozzle and the liner for it. And this one is going to be going up on a K445 load. It's a classic from CTI. It goes in this 54 millimeter case. Um, and so what I'm doing right now is I'm packing the ejection charges that'll make sure that the parachutes come out. So you can see, looking at my avionics, I've got a couple of different things. I've got this straddle logger and I've got this telemetrum. This telemetrum has a radio um, that'll be downlinking information to my laptop. And the straddle logger just provides redundancy so that I have a, a backup way to deploy the parachutes. And they're both controlled by this set of switches on the back here. So if I remove this pin, um, they'll both turn on and they'll beep to let me know they're alive. Um, but beeps scare people here at rocket launches, so you keep that pin in until you're ready to fly. Um, so to pack the charges, you can see this is what one of these bulkheads looks like. And uh, so it's got this charge cup right here, and it's still kind of gross from the last time I flew it. And then it's got these screw terminals here that are what I plug the E-matches into. So an E-match is this device right here, and it initiates the ejection charge by taking a PCB, so there's a little PCB buried under all of this material here that has a thin piece of wire soldered on either side of it. So current goes in one side and down the other, and that heats that wire up, which lights this pyrogen right here. And that's what lights the black powder that makes the parachute come out. So what we do is we take these E-matches, and you're, you want to put them into the charge cup without them shorting on anything. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to take tape, and we're going to fold it over the charge cup like this and this is going to keep the uh, e-match from shorting to the copper charge cup i want to get the length right so you can see it comes out of this right here and goes into here so we'll just set it right there and kind of measure it up and over so now we know about how long this needs to be so we can trim it off and you just trim it back about twice as far as you expect you would because these screw terminals are a little messy you're gonna have to fold the wire over on itself uh, to in order to get enough wire for the screw terminal to grab it reliably. So you take it and then you put just like a little bend in it so that you've got more to meat to grab onto when you put it into the screw terminal. Alright, so then you give it a little pull test to make sure it's in there nice and secure because you don't want it to come out in flight. And then you uh, finish out installing it. What's up? That's a firm rocket, a Patriot. That's a wild man kit. It's flying on a K six nine five. We're gonna see this fly in five, four, three, two, one. Uh oh! Watch the nose cone. Two. You're the guy with the good eyes here. Yeah, all right. I can <laughs> I can uh, try and keep it. My level one rocket, I pulled it out of the closet. <laughs> That's always worth doing that from time to time. We flew the drone around. We couldn't see it. We hiked around, and Andrew and Ethan couldn't find it, so... Whoa!
Well, if you couldn't tell, the weather has taken a turn for the worst. Whew! We are soaked. So I didn't get any flights off today. We'll be back tomorrow. Jeez Louise, guys. That was fast. It was just clear one second and storming the next. Andrew and Ethan are still out in this muck somewhere hunting for a rocket they launched before the storm started. And, uh, well, hopefully they don't, you know, drown before they get back. We don't really have a lot of options. Uh, you know, the rain is supposed to come back tomorrow at 1, so all the flights have to be off the rail before 1. So these are the parts for a CTI-1550 3-grain Blue Streak load for the rocket that I will be building and flying tomorrow. Sometime before the rain. When is the rain? Well, the forecast just changed to most of the day, so... Oh, and, and that'll just slide up. There can be combustion happening there. And then you push the next grain in. There. This assembly right here is... So that's how this is held in. And so there's an O-ring that sits in a gland right here to seal on this surface. And so that O-ring kit... For AeroTac, they're in the, the same bag. But like the nozzle and stuff comes in because that's separately packed in the liner. But if I remember correctly, in the CTI motors that I've you know, seen, I don't know. I know what you're talking about. It wasn't in there. Well, I mean, yeah. Well, that does put a bit of damper on the build the rocket motor today plan. So we're repacking the car after the torrential downpour because everything was covered in mud and they're cleaning my floor pads. How about that? These guys get invited to the next rocket launch. That is that is quality customer service right there. So we're driving through Albany, New York, and the power just went out on the street lights and the stop signs and the stop lights. It's, it's just dark. It's very dark. Okay, we're gonna go out to the B rack here. I've got my flight card filled out. Ethan's got my rocket. We're gonna go get this thing on the pad. Mr. LCO, can I give you a flight card? You can give me one. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. I think three is open then. Awesome. Thank you. See you. That's great. Yeah. And then you tip it over, and then you lift it up, and it can come all the way down. So then you slide the rocket down, and uh, now we tip the thing up. Which way do you want to point? Uh, I like the angle putting it down range, um, but I want it less tipped. Do we have a garbage box out here? Yeah. Not really, so I guess uh, this is mine now. Just try and leave the fields clean. We got to turn on the avionics, and I do that just by pulling this right here. And that's both of them live. Um, I really just need to wait for the straddle logger to warm up because I've got the telemetrum with live telemetry. So the telemetrum is giving three chirps, and that means the telemetrum is happy. I don't have drogue continuity on the straddle logger, um, but I have motor ejection back up at 14 seconds, so we'll definitely separate that way. Um, anyway, uh, now I got to do the igniter install. And you take the igniter and you feed it up the motor until you find the top. And this is a long, this is about five grains. There we go. And you just repeat that process, slide it up, and this time you put the cap on. Then you take the igniter, and just to make sure it stays with the, uh, with the pad, you give it a loop around. And then you take, uh, take this, and I always rub these together, just to make sure there's no static buildup or anything. And then you grab the wire, and you twist it around backwards just to lock it in place. It's kind of a practice motion by now. Um, so you grab the end, and then you wrap it around to hold the alligator clip closed. 
and then you spread them out so that they don't short and hide them away from the rocket flame. And you make sure your camera is running. Who knows? It's not bright enough for me to see the light. Um, and now we need to run back and uh, check out the telemetry to make sure that we've actually got a live rocket. Forgot, quick continuity check. That means the igniter is detected and ready to go. Rocket is called Stella. It's that blue rocket over there on three. He's flying on a K450. He's got a straddle logger altimeter. And in five, four, three, two, one. Three, two, one. We're along this babbling brook in this chasm, next to this forest. Open field where the rocket could have landed, where the rocket did land, somewhere up there. So Ethan and I are gonna poke around and try and find it. And you are looking at my rocket, 40 feet up a tree. So, uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do about that yet. Uh, significantly worse than yesterday, believe it or not. Yeah, it was worse. We're driving home with two rockets fewer than we, we arrived with. One rocket is up a tree, and uh, I have a very, very nice gentleman who has agreed to rescue my rocket for me next weekend. Um, so it'll be here hopefully the next time I come back to Erg. Uh, Andrew uh, is unfortunately in the position of having to figure out what on earth to do with his rocket, which is somewhere in the rows of corn. Um, but those clouds are spectacular.